let us go further this is one more question from the same exercise here you can see that the question is quite big and six different things are asked to you okay but don't get confused here even though many things are asked it is very very simple okay so let us read the question first tip top electronics supplied an ac of 1.5 ton to a company cost of the ac supplied is rupees 51200 with gst that means total cost of the ac is given taxable value plus gst rate of cgst on ac is 14% rate of cgst is given that means rate of gst is exactly double that is 28% because you know that ac is a luxury item and therefore the rate of gst is highest that is 28% then find the following amounts as shown in the tax invoice of tip top electronics we have to find out all these things we have to find out rate of sgst so very easy to calculate rate of cgst is given so we can write down the rate of sgst very easily it is same rate of gst also we can write down easily it is exactly double then we have to tax find the taxable value of ac as we have found out in the previous question then we have to find out gst and we have to find out cgst and sgst the question is very much similar to previous one but only thing is that six different things are asked okay so i have covered this question so let us start now first of all first of all let us write down what is given to us okay first thing we want to find out so rate of cgst on ac is 14% this is given to us from that very easily we can write down the rate of sgst on ac that rate of sgst is equal to 14% so the first question was very easy let us go to the second question now rate of gst on ac rate of gst on ac is rate of cgst plus rate of sgst so 14% plus 14% that is 28% exactly double okay then the third question taxable value of ac which is unknown to us so we have to consider that as x as we have done in the previous sum okay so let us take the taxable value of ac as x which is unknown to us okay then amount of gst we can calculate very easily rate of gst into taxable value and therefore amount of gst is 28x upon 100 28% of x gst is 28% of taxable value so that 28% of x we can write as rupees 28x upon 100 so this is amount of gst and from this we can get the total value total value is what taxable value plus gst so the total value is x plus 20x x upon 100 again if we do cross multiplication 100x plus 28x upon 100 so the answer is rupees 128x upon 100 but this value is provided to us in the question and that value is rupees 51200 that means this value and this value they are equal so we can write down them therefore we can write down 128x upon 100 is equal to 51000 upon 200 from that we can get the value of x as 51200 into 100 divided by 128 you can cancel this 128 by 512 is exactly divisible by 4 here okay so here 128 fours are 512 and from that value of x we will get as rupees 40000 so this 40000 is the taxable value of the ac okay we have found out the third thing that is taxable value so write down the answer therefore the taxable value of ac is rupees 40000 now we have to find out gst sgst and cgst so let us calculate okay total gst is equal to what Co total uh, cost including gst okay so here 
how we are going to get this okay let us start with the next question total gst is equal to total cost including gst minus taxable price how we are going to get gst that is total cost minus taxable price we know the total uh, cost and we know the taxable price so subtract them so 51200 minus 40000 from that total gst we will get as rupees 11200 so the fourth sum is fourth part is completed we found out total gst and from this now we have to calculate cgst and sgst so calculate any one either cgst or sgst and from that you can write down the another correct so amount of cgst is equal to what total gst divided by 2 so 11200 divided by 2 we are going to get the cgst as rupees 5600 and from that we can write down the value of sgst because cgst and sgst they are always same and therefore the amount of sgst is rupees 5600 okay so even though there were many things to find the question was not that difficult it was very easy okay so always try to understand how to calculate what you have to keep in mind is the total value consist of the two things that is taxable value plus the gst paid and from that easily you can calculate the taxable value always take the taxable value as unknown variable that is x and from that you can calculate it okay now let us go further let us see more concepts here now in next concept we are going to see that gst in trading chain how the trading chain is established that we can see when we go to the shopkeeper for purchasing anything that shopkeeper has not manufactured that thing okay he has ordered it from somebody called as retailer that retailer has ordered the thing from the wholesaler or distributor and from where the things are coming to the wholesaler or distributor they are coming from the manufacturer okay so here you can see the trading chain is always established okay directly the things are not coming in market from the manufacturer okay there is a chain so you can see that from manufacturer the things are going to the wholesaler or distributor from that they are going to the retailer retailer means what the shopkeeper or the one who is purchasing here from the wholesaler and finally it goes to the consumer that means we the common people which we purchase the things okay like you can say that retailer may be any grocery shop owner and we are going to purchase their sugar or we can go go there to purchase rice sweet and so on okay so we are called consumers and we are going to the shop they are called as retailers they have purchased from wholesalers and these wholesalers has got from the things from manufacturer okay so this way there is a trading chain is there and in this this trading chain gst is applicable at every stage okay so now let us see how gst is calculated in this trading chain for this purpose we will take one example okay so in this one example is given this the example of watch is given okay so down you can see the chain manufacturer wholesaler retailer and customer okay so first of all the manufacturer has manufactured the watch and the value of that watch is rupees 200 so manufacturer has to pay gst on this 200 rupees okay so here the gst for watch is 12% so 12% of 200 that is rupees 24 so manufacturer is going to pay the gst of rupees 24 here got it 24 that is 12% of 200 so wholesaler has purchased the watch here and he purchased for rupees 300 okay so here also that wholesaler is going to pay the tax that is 12% of 300 rupees 36 but what 
is considered here is that previously the wholesale uh, sorry manufacturer has paid rupees 24 and the wholesaler is charged with rupees 36 but while paying this wholesaler will not pay rupees 36 but he will subtract rupees 24 so the gst paid by wholesaler here is 36 minus 24 that is rupees 12 here so this 36 rupees is called as output tax and 24 rupees is called as input tax credit okay so in this chain this way the wholesaler is going to pay only rupees 12 36 minus 24 that is rupees 12 the wholesaler is going to pay rupees 12 only manufacturer is going to pay rupees 24 wholesaler will pay rupees 12 now see this is coming to retailer and retailer is selling this watch for rupees 400 to the customer so again this retailer will collect the tax so the tax is 12 percent of 400 that is 48 but once again this retailer also will consider this 36 as input tax credit and 48 is output tax so the actual gst payable here for the retailer is 48 minus 36 that is 12 okay so now we can calculate the total gst here the total gst is 24 plus 12 plus 12 that is total gst is rupees 48 and this will be divided as cgst and sgst that is central gst central goods and service tax and states goods and service tax okay so this is divided as 24 and 24 exactly half of gst but here what we have observed is these rupees 48 are paid by the customer only got it 48 rupees are paid by customer only so even though the chain is shown and even though this gst is paid by manufacturer wholesaler and retailer this gst is taken from the customer only okay let us go further so here you can see the invoices the first invoice tax invoice for manufacturer you can see second tax invoice for wholesaler and third is tax invoice for retailer because three persons are going to prepare the bills so here all these transactions took place in the same state or in one state okay so here therefore the invoices are generated as given here and here every tax invoice is showing the computation of computation of gst so see for manufacturer the price of the watch was 200 cgst paid is 12 and sgst paid is 12 so total cost is what rupees 224 okay this is called as b2b means business to business because manufacturer is giving to the wholesaler here now for wholesaler the invoice is shown here this is also of type b2b because it's business then here he will prepare like this the price of the watch is 300 then cgst paid is rupees 18 sgst paid is rupees 18 and total cost is rupees 336 and third invoice is prepared by retailer that means from which the customer is taking the watch so here the price of the watch is rupees 400 CGST is 24, SGST is 24 and total is 448. This invoice is called as B2C, business to consumer. Okay. So, these two invoices they are called as B2B means business to business and this is business to consumer or business to customer. So, this type of invoice is called as B2C. In this way, the tax invoices are generated at different different stages in the trading chain. Okay, I hope you have understood this. When we will solve the problems, that will you will understand it better. Okay, so here as I have explained, trading between GST identification holders, that is GST IN holders, that is businessmen, is called as business to business. In short, B2B. Trading between GST IN holder and consumer in, is known as business to consumer or in to short B2C. Okay? This B2C is the last link in the trading chain. So, here 
Bifurcation of the taxes paid to the government by traders at each stage are shown. That manufacturer is going to pay the tax of rupees twenty four total GST, which is divided as twelve and twelve as CGST and SGST. Tax paid by the wholesaler is rupees twelve six and six, and tax paid by the retailer is rupees twelve is six and six. So total is rupees twenty four. Okay, but here you have to observe the thing as I have said that at every stage a trader has paid GST after subtracting the tax he paid at the time of purchase of the tax he collected at the time of sell. Okay, that means what whatever tax he is collecting at the time of sell. He is subtracting the tax which is already paid at the time of purchase. Okay, so here at the end the customer is paying rupees four forty eight for the watch. Watch. So the total tax paid by all the traders was indirectly paid by the customer, as I explained you there. So GST is a type of indirect tax. In this case, the wholesaler and retailer. Used their input tax as credit and got back all the GST paid by them. Okay, that means whatever they are paying, they are taking it back from the customers. So in short, indirectly, the GST is paid by the customer only, and that is why it is called as indirect tax. Now let us go further. Here, here we are. We will try to understand certain terms called as input tax credit and output tax, and from that we will get the formula of GST payable. Okay, so here GST is levied and collected at every stage of trading from manufacturer to consumer. Means what? There is a trading chain between manufacturer and consumer. Directly, we are not purchasing the goods from the manufacturer. So here, GST is collected at every stage. So when the trader pays GST at the time of purchase, it is called as input tax, and he collects GST at the time of sell. That is called as output tax. So The GST which is paid at the time of purchase is called as input tax, and which is collected at the time of sell, it is called as output tax. Okay, so here from this, this input tax is called as input tax credit, and the GST payable is output tax minus ITC. You have to keep this formula in mind. GST payable. Is equal to output tax minus ITC. Okay, so what we have to keep in mind, in short or in nutshell, that while paying taxes to the government, each trader in the trading chain subtracts the tax paid at the time of purchase from the tax collected at the time of sell and pays the remaining tax. That is why GST payable is equal to output tax. That means the tax which he is collecting at the time of sell minus ITC input tax credit. Okay, the tax that is the trader pays at the time of the sale. Correct. So here this formula is very very important. Let us go further. Now we are starting with practice set 4.2. Okay, so here the problems are based on the trading chain. So let us try to understand how to solve these problems. So the first question here is: Chetna store paid total GST of rupees one lakh five thousand at the time of purchase, okay, and collected GST rupees one lakh twenty two thousand five hundred at the time of sale. During first of July two thousand seventeen to thirty first July two thousand seventeen. See, this year is important. This year is same financial year. Find the GST payable by Chetna Stores. So just recall the formula. GST payable is equal to what? Output tax minus ITC input tax credit. So here. The tax which is paid at the time of purchase, this is called as what ITC input tax credit. So here rupees one lakh five hundred is ITC, 
and the tax collected at the time of sale this is called as output tax so we have itc we have output tax so it is very simple to calculate gst payable because we know that gst payable is equal to output tax minus itc so let us write down the given things input tax credit itc is equal to rupees 1 lakh 5500 then output tax is rupees 1 lakh 22500 and what we have to find is gst payable so write down the formula gst payable is equal to output tax minus itc okay so output tax is rupees 1 lakh 22500 minus itc is 1 lakh 500 and from that we got the answer as rupees 22000 this is gst payable don't forget to write down the final answer in words the gst payable by chetna stores is rupees 22000 so this was a simple question where you were provided with output tax and you are provided with the input tax credit and you have to find out gst payable okay i hope you must have understood this was the simplest question from this practice set okay now let us go further where we have the chain of trading okay here we can see the chain of trading first of all we have let us read the question amir enterprise purchased chocolate sauce bottles and paid gst of rupees 3800 okay he sold those bottles to akbari brothers and collected gst of rupees 4100 that means this is itc for amir enterprises it is input tax credit and this is output tax okay now the third person that is mayang food corner he purchased these bottles from akbari brothers and paid gst of rupees 4500 so here for akbari brothers this is going to be the output tax and this is going to be the input tax credit what we have to find is find the amount of gst payable at every stage of trading and hence find payable cgst and sgst okay so here three persons are given and here we have to find out the gst payable in these two stages that is from for amir enterprises and for this akbari brothers okay and after finding out gst payable it is very easy to calculate cgst and sgst because it is exactly half of gst okay so let us start for amir enterprises as i have said input tax credit that means itc is what is he paid at the time of purchase that is rupees 3800 and output tax is rupees 4100 you can see here so it is very easy to find out gst payable write down the formula gst payable is equal to output tax minus itc okay writing formula everywhere is very very important so put the values output tax is rupees 4100 and itc is rupees 3800 and from that gst is rupees 300 okay let us go further here gst is rupees 300 but we have to calculate cgst and sgst also so that cgst and sgst is exactly half of that so 300 divided by 2 is equal to rupees 150 so here the gst payable by amir enterprises is rupees 300 and cgst and sgst is rupees 150 okay so this is for one chain we have done for amir enterprises to akbari brothers now we have to find out for the second stage that is from akbari brothers to mayang food corner okay so let us write down for now the akbari brothers so for akbari brothers here input tax credit is rupees 4100 and output tax is rupees 4500 so from that we can find out the gst payable that is output tax minus itc so 4500 minus 4100 that is rupees 400 this is gst paid by akbari brothers okay so let's write down the answer therefore gst payable by akbari brothers is rupees 400 and 
from that you can write down the cgst and sgst which is exactly half divide 400 by 2 that is rupees 200 okay so in this way we have found out the cgst sgst and cgst in all the two stages okay let us go further here now this is a different question we have to prepare one tax invoice and the tax invoice is of type b to c that means from business to consumer by using the given information okay so here let us read the question prepare business to consumer b to c tax invoice using given information write the name of the supplier address state date invoice number gst in that is gst identification number etc as per your choice okay so this is the format given that how we have to write down we have to take our own names here okay so this way we have to complete the first part of the invoice that taking any name any address of our choice here the particulars are provided to us that rate of mobile battery is 200 rate of gst is given as 12% hsn code is given and quantity is given one piece okay similarly for headphone the price is given rate of gst is given hsn code is given and one piece is given so just recall the invoice which i showed you in the beginning okay so we have to prepare all those columns here above we have to write down tax invoice then we have to write down the name of the supplier address its email id mobile number whatever we have then we have to write down gst identification number then invoice number everything we have to write down and then we have to prepare the required columns that is serial number then hsn code after that name of the product after that rate then quantity then taxable value then cgst sgst and finally total so these many columns we need so these columns you should recall how i recall now in the same way you should recall okay so the tax is uh, tax invoice is already prepared by me so i will explain you that let us see now okay so first i have to give the heading tax invoice and this way you have to prepare tax invoice see the supplier is abc electricals since mobile and all is there i gave the name as abc electricals you can write down any other name here then the address complete address the telephone number you can add here email id also okay then the then the invoice number is given that invoice number is here i have taken as 64 okay then gst in number consist of 15 alpha numerals you can write down here this gst in number you can write here also and invoice number you can write here also so anywhere you can write and invoice date for example i have taken the date as 10 8 2020 you can take any date here then as i have said you make all the columns serial number hsn code name of product rate that means value of one piece quantity how many pieces are purchased from that we have to calculate taxable amount then the two types of taxes cgst and sgst here we have two columns rate and the tax rate and the tax and from that we have to write down the total okay so this is given to us serial number we have to give one hsn code uh, hsn code is provided to us in the question so write down that from question name is mobile battery rate is given 200 quantity also is given one so taxable amount means rate into quantity 200 into one that is 200 here the value of or the rate of gst is given to us you can see here rate of gst is given as 12% but in invoice we are showing cgst and sgst so exactly half of that we have to write so half of 12 is 6% so cgst rate is 6% and sgst rate is 6% so write down 6% both the places so 6% of 200 6 upon 100 into 200 so 6 twos are 12 the tax is 12 cgst is 12 and sgst is 12 then write down total total is of these three columns taxable amount 
CGST tax and SGST tax. Okay, so 200 plus 12 plus 12, the total value is 224. Similarly, we have to calculate for headphone. Write down HSN code. Then write down the name of the product. Rate is 750 given to us. Quantity also is given to us. Then taxable amount is we can get. by multiplying these two columns 750 into 1 that is 750 okay so the grand total you can see here the taxable amount is 200 plus 750 that is 950 okay then gst is given as 18% in the question from that we can say that cgst is 9% and sgst is 9% so 9% of 750 the value will be 67.50 so right at both the places then this total is done here this total is done here and for the second product here headphone the total is done as 750 plus 67.50 plus 67.50 which will turn out to be 885 and finally the total of this column is shown that is 1109 that means the customer has to pay this much amount okay but you will find that the tax is calculated separately for each the tax is calculated separately for each uh, different thing that means for mobile battery it is calculated separately and for headphone it is calculated separately why because the rate of gst is different for mobile battery it was 12% and for headphone it was 18% so they are calculated separately okay finally we cannot calculate them because they are different but while showing the grand total we have to show the grand totals of taxable amount cgst sgst so finally when you add all these three you are going to get this amount and this amount the customer has to pay okay so in this way we have to prepare tax invoice okay all these things you can take of your own the important part is you have to keep in mind this sequence very easy to keep in mind serial number the second is hsn code then name of product rate quantity taxable amount then the two components of gst cgst and sgst and finally total please note that gst is not shown here okay so this way you have to prepare the tax invoice i hope you must have understood this